Howdy. How's everybody doing? I'm fantastic. I've had a crazy week, but it's all good. God is on the throne. I'm going to show y'all some scripture. Uh, maybe shed some light on why we should all read the Bible for ourselves. I'm going to show you some nuggets that I think you may relate to. And after I show you these things, I hope I may have brought some clarity or maybe get you thinking anyhow. Why we should read the word of God for ourselves? Because deception is real and you may not realize it. But as soon as your eyes open, the devil is coming to try to take everything good away from you and hinder you from God's purpose in your life. I believe the deception is so great that our only hope is the Holy Scripture, the only thing constant in this world. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will remain forever. That's Matthew 24, 35. Have you ever looked at a passage of Scripture in the Bible or on a billboard sign or and thought, wow, that is exactly what I am going through? Or thought it was at least relevant or know somebody who was going through at least the same thing. I think we know plenty of people that could uh, use a little encouragement right now. God said in John three sixteen that uh, he gave his only begotten son that whoever so shall believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I'm not a Bible scholar, nor do I claim to be, but I have found liberation in the truth, and I am a firm believer in the whole Word of God. It is the divine expression, the divine utterance. It's God's analogy. It is the supreme logos, a strong concordant, 3056 logos. Love the strongest concordance. It pop the scripture open for you it has for me reading the bible for yourself is imperative you mustn't take someone else's word for it completely i mean it helps we all need someone else's iron sharpens iron but reading the bible for yourself is imperative you mustn't take someone else's word for it you really must discern for yourself what truth is. If we don't have to learn how to discern what's right from wrong, we'll just fall for anything coming down the pike. The first and most important reason to read the Bible is for guidance. When you read the Word of God, pray. Pray that God will speak through the Scripture and give you guidance. Like I said, I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't have all the verses memorized. And it's good to memorize and quote scripture. The best thing to write it down in is in your heart. Memorize the words in your heart. Find a translation that's best for you. Now remember, the Torah did not have chapters and verses according to the Watchtower magazine. The Watchtower magazine says that the the Bible wasn't broken down into chapters and verses until 13th century CE when English cleric Stephen Langton, later to become Archbishop of Canterbury, is credited with adding chapter divisions to the Bible. The Watchtower magazine goes on to remind us that even Paul cited the Torah as the holy writings because they didn't have it wasn't broke down into chapters and verses it was a long it was a long it was on a scroll so I imagine that was a pain in the neck back then but God works his his ways and we got it to where we can communicate it to each other it was a pain back then I bet so I'm telling you don't just read the Bible digest it like it's your favorite meal Savor every word and gain wisdom. Jeremiah 5, 15, 16. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. 
For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. But there are many other reasons to read the Bible as well. Another important reason to read it is for correction. I think we can all agree that we've been tested lately. And the more reason to blow the dust off that good book. Just, it's, it's our hope at the end of the day. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. That is, one approved after being tested. I mean, haven't we all been tested? Like like I said, we've this year has been crazy. It looks like it's going to get crazier. So, you just remember that that's the only constant thing in this world is God's Word. I think most people will agree with me there that they've been tested lately and they need some sort of hope, comfort. He is the ultimate comforter. It goes on to say not to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. The devil has been around since scripture's been around. Longer than that, he was there when they wrote. I mean, in um, so we need to be buried in the word because frankly, the devil knows the Bible better than we do. He even knows it good enough to twist it up to where we, you know, got them itchy ears. You go somewhere and you hear something you like. There you go. Watch out. Get in the Word for yourself so you can discern the truth for yourself because the deception is real and it's getting worse. Or it's always been there. We're just finding out about it. So stick with the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yeshua was the ultimate example of walking in the truth. He was the word. He's, he is the word. One example was when Yeshua, he was, he went in the wilderness for 40 days after he was baptized. And the devil was riding him the whole way. You know, he said, I could go down a whole another rabbit hole there, but he was tempted by Satan. And what did Yeshua say when the accuser told him to turn those stones to bread? Now remember now, the Son of Man has not eaten for 40 days, 40 nights. Could you imagine how hungry you would be? Strong man, strong will. He had the Word of God. He was the Word. So that's the steady, simple truth. You don't need to get it twisted up. It's just... Take it for it, what it is. Read the context. There in which is where the meat lies. The Son of Man had not eaten for 40 days. What did Yeshua say? He said, man may not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. We need to discipline ourselves in the word. That's just all there is to it. We... We have to go at it. If we don't have a desire to read it, we need to pray about it, that he would give us a desire to read it. Reading whole chapters in books to get the whole context. Like I said, if you're drinking milk, you probably need to start eating some meat. Get them spiritual muscles built up. Because it's going to get tough. I'm telling you. You already know. You can... If you know, it starts with us right here, right now. And from here on out, all of us, down to you. Pastor and author Jeffrey Robinson said, Whether in a court of law, over coffee, conversation, or in your own mind, questioning in initial claims, questioning initial claims, is a necessary discipline in becoming a wise person. So start questioning the Bible on a whole nother level. There is a really good verse in Romans, it's on in nine, chapter 9, verse 20. It says, But who are you, O man, to say to its molder, Why have you made me like this? I say that to God all the time. Why are you making me like this? 
He has he has the answers. I don't. <laughs> I say, uh, I ask him. Be honest. The Bible is the only the beginning to a blossoming romance of truth and freedom. It's been crazy for a lot of us. It's been upside down year. It's been a roller coaster. There's one thing that will remain forever. So get in there. Find a translation that you that you like, that you're comfortable with, and let God speak to you. Bless you. Stick to your guns.